The Houthis strike with a deadly weapon, the SA-6, radar guided and flying at Mach 2.8, climbs into the sky. A missile built to turn any aircraft into wreckage. But the United States is not so easily defeated. The F-16, equipped with the PIDS defense system, and the ALQ-184 pod, carries technology built to turn danger into nothing. And when it's time to strike back, the US Navy's SM-6, faster and stronger, crushes every ambition of the enemy. At 4.23 p.m. local time on the 19th of February 2025, a U.S. Air Force F-16 from the 1st Fighter Squadron was providing top cover for a U.S. Navy task force moving along the Yemeni coast. Up to that point, the patrol had been quiet. Then everything changed in seconds. The F-16 pilot did not know a Houthi SA-6 surface-to-air missile system near Hodeidah had locked on and launched. The missile, with a maximum range of 14 miles and a top speed of Mach 2.8, left the pilot only seconds to react. Fortunately, the F-16 was equipped with advanced electronic countermeasure systems, capable of jamming and neutralizing the strike. Mounted on the nose of the aircraft, the ANAPG-83 radar served as the first line of defense in an emergency. The moment it detected an incoming S, A6, at a distance of 26 miles, the pilot immediately pulled the jet into a steep dive, dropping from 30,000 feet to 15,000 feet, trying to disrupt the missile's guidance. The SA-6 is a semi-active, radar-guided missile. It depends on ground-based radar illumination to maintain a lock during flight. Once launched, it receives fire control data and speeds toward its target. In the final seconds, the seeker in its warhead activates, homing in on radar reflections from the F-16 to execute the terminal attack. The dive was not only an evasive move, but also an attempt to break the missile's fire control link. Yet the threat was far from over. With the ability to detect fighter-sized targets with a radar cross-section of about 58 square feet at ranges up to 290 miles, the enemy radar quickly picked up additional SA-6 missiles being launched. The pilot kept maneuvering hard, with only 18 seconds to react to the relentless barrage. The radar could track up to 20 targets at once, but its accuracy dropped sharply when targets moved 60 degrees off the center line, falling to roughly 47%. Each violent turn made tracking harder, leaving the pilot nearly blind to several missiles racing toward him. At this critical moment, the F-16's backup defense systems came into play, systems that could determine both the pilot's survival and the success of the mission. Mounted on the aircraft's wing pylons was a specialized device, the Terma Pylon Integrated Dispensing System, or PIDS, a key link in the electronic defense chain, built to disrupt enemy missile guidance. Each PIDS unit weighs about 42 pounds and slightly reduces the jet's weapons load, about 3%, but the trade-off is well worth it. With six AAR-60V-2 ultraviolet sensors placed around the aircraft, the system provides full 360-degree coverage, detecting missile launches from up to six miles away. When the SA-6 was detected, the system reacted instantly, releasing 12 MJU-50B flares and 24 RR-180 chaff bundles. Together, they formed a cloud about a third of a mile wide, a mix of infrared and radio frequency decoys. But against the SA-6's strong radar lock, it still wasn't enough. In the emergency, the pilot turned to the final line of defense, the ALQ-184 jamming pod mounted beneath the fuselage. This electronic warfare pod uses digital RF memory technology, operating across the 2 to 20 gigahertz range. Crucially, it can directly jam the SA-6's fire control radar frequencies in the 6 to 8 gigahertz band. 
Once it was activated, the connection between the ground radar and the incoming missile was broken. The result was immediate. The missile's accuracy dropped by nearly 70%. They lost lock, slipped into a ballistic path, and streaked harmlessly past the jet. But the threat from the Houthis wasn't over. Just 44 minutes later, at 5.7 p.m., a US MQ-9 Reaper drone took off from Chabeli Airfield in Djibouti and was flying a routine reconnaissance mission about 50 miles northeast of Hodeida. Its task, to monitor Houthi supply convoys moving to reinforce positions near the town. Frustrated after failing to down the F-16, Houthi forces tried again, launching another SA-6 at the MQ-9 Reaper. Unlike a fighter jet, the drone couldn't perform high-G maneuvers, but it carried the Pandora missile warning system, which detected the launch less than one second after the enemy radar went active. The Reaper immediately activated its ANALE-47 countermeasure system, deploying decoys to confuse the missile. At the same time, the drone climbed above 15,000 feet, pulling the incoming missile out of its dead zone, the 30-degree cutout directly beneath the horizon where defenses are least effective. As the Reaper climbed higher, the ANALE-47 fired eight flares in just four seconds, creating a decoy cloud roughly 300 square meters wide to mislead the SA-6. But the system had limits. The MQ-9 carried only 60 MJU, 60 B flares, and 120 RR, 180 chaff bundles, enough for 12 engagements per mission. Once 75% of that inventory was used, the drone had to abort and return to base for safety. Decisions on when to deploy countermeasures were supported by the ALR-69 radar warning receiver, capable of scanning frequencies from 0.5 to 20 gigahertz. With this system, the Reaper could detect SA-6 fire control radar emissions from as far as 125 miles away, with azimuth accuracy within one degree. Thanks to this early warning capability, the Reaper could respond to missile launches in less than two seconds, enough time for remote operators to trigger defensive countermeasures. Although it escaped the attack, the Reaper did not return unscathed. After landing back at base, technicians found the drone's right wing punctured by steel fragments from the SA-6's fragmentation warhead, a warhead packed with up to 12,000 metal pellets. The aircraft remained airworthy, and was ready to resume missions soon after. What stood out was not the damage itself, but the nature of the strike. While such launches had become common, this incident marked something far more serious, the first time Houthi forces directly targeted a manned US aircraft during the conflict. A clear escalation, one that demanded a decisive American response. U.S. Central Command and the White House were both stunned by the bold daylight strike against American forces. President Trump quickly concluded that only an immediate and decisive response could deter further aggression. Within eight hours of the attack, the guided missile destroyer USS Spruance was ordered to move closer to the Yemeni coast. Upon reaching its launch position, the crew received encrypted firing orders from Central Command, the signal to begin the American counterstrike. Normally, Tomahawk cruise missiles would be the weapon of choice for land attack missions. This time, however, the US Navy chose a more creative approach, using the flexibility of the destroyer's vertical launch system. Each Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, DDG, carries a mixed arsenal inside its VLS cells. Tomahawk long-range land attack cruise missile, SM-2ER, extended range surface to air missile, ASROC, anti-submarine rocket, SM-6, the Navy's newest generation advanced air defense missile. On destroyers fitted for ballistic missile defense, the loadout also includes the SM-3 interceptor. This mix lets US surface combatants strike ashore and defend against threats from air, land, and sea. The Navy's decision to use the SM-6 inches this strike was not only tactical, it was symbolic. A clear message to the Houthis, provoke us and you face overwhelming American military power. 
The SM-6 is among the Navy's most advanced air defense interceptors, second only to the SM-3 for ballistic missile defense. Armed with a roughly 33-pound high-explosive warhead and capable of reaching speeds up to Mach 3.5, the SM-6 was built to destroy fighter aircraft and cruise missiles. Recently, it has been upgraded for multi-mission use, including land attack roles, once reserved for Tomahawk or the Navy Strike Missile. The SM-6's range is about 149 miles, shorter than a Tomahawk, but its supersonic speed and penetration make it the best choice when a rapid response is required. This deployment was the first publicly acknowledged use of the SM-6 inches a land attack role. The target was highly mobile, the SA-6 launcher and its IS-91 fire control radar. Satellite data showed the systems near Hodeida at the time of surveillance, but moving at roughly 34 miles per hour, they could relocate hundreds of miles by the time a strike was authorized. In that context, speed was decisive. After receiving orders from U.S. Central Command, the destroyer USS Spruance moved at full speed to its launch area in the Southern Red Sea. The combat watchstanders aboard had under 30 minutes to generate a flight plan, load navigation data, and approve the launch sequence. Importantly, the missile would not fly a simple straight-line path. That would be easy for enemy defenses to intercept. Instead, the crew programmed a chain of waypoints, sometimes dozens, to guide the missile to a planned initial navigation point. Once the missile reached that area, the classified mission library took over and steered it at supersonic speed toward the target. That method maximized the chance of striking and destroying a mobile system like the SA-6 launcher and its fire control radar. At approximately 2 a.m. local time, two SM-6 missiles erupted from the vertical launch system of USS Spruance, streaking brilliant trails of light across the night sky. With only a few hundred miles to travel, each missile needed less than six minutes to close and destroy its target. Although the Houthis had built a relatively robust air defense network, it proved powerless against the SM-6. Its supersonic speed and high maneuverability left no chance of interception. The missiles struck with pinpoint precision, obliterating the SA-6 launcher and its associated fire control radar. Signals intelligence and intercept data collected immediately afterward confirmed the target's destruction, including the deaths of the eight Houthi operators manning the system. But this was not the end. Between 2014 and 2015, Houthi forces captured 12 to 15 SA-6 launchers from the Yemeni military. Over the past decade, with direct support from Iran, they upgraded the radars and fitted the missiles with more modern seekers. As a result, the Houthis now maintain a significant arsenal capable of threatening US military aircraft in the region, a situation the Pentagon found unacceptable. After the successful the 20th of February 2025 strike that eliminated one SA-6 site, the US Navy concluded a lasting deterrent was required. A clear message that any attack on American aircraft would carry a heavy price. At 5 p.m. local time on the 20th of February 2025, the first of four strike waves began as F-A-18 fighters roared off the deck of USS Harry S. Truman. But these aircraft were not loaded with 2,000-pound JDA, MIS or standard bunker busters. Instead, the Navy used a more sophisticated long-range weapon. The AGM-154 JSOW the long arm of justice. Range, about 73 to 81 miles when launched from high altitude. Guidance, GPS navigation for high accuracy in all weather. Warhead options, a variant with 145 submunitions for wide area effect and a variant with a 192 pound unitary warhead, ideal for hardened targets like bunkers or fixed military infrastructure. From 5 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., U.S. Air Force and Navy aircraft carried out successive strike waves using F.A. 18 fighters. Their targets, major weapons depots near the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, a critical logistics hub for Houthi forces. In each wave, 
The fighters, armed with precision-guided munitions, destroyed priority targets identified on the intelligence list. The campaign did not stop there. The destroyer USS Gravy, deployed in support, launched six Tomahawk cruise missiles, hitting remaining objectives amid the smoking ruins. Completing the coordinated assault between air and naval forces. Confirmed Houthi losses based on intelligence sources. 14. Kahair M2 ballistic missiles destroyed completely. 3 SA-6 launchers and their fire control systems eliminated. 23 anti-ship cruise missiles destroyed inside storage facilities. This air campaign was assessed as the strongest strike of early 2025 against the Houthis' long-range firepower and air defense network. It dealt serious damage to their ability to threaten air and ground targets, but it did not erase their arsenal. Stockpiles, especially missile caches hidden in Yemen's western mountains and along the coastline, remain intact. In May 2025, a ceasefire was reached through Omani mediation. Under the agreement, the Houthis halted attacks on U.S. naval forces in the Red Sea and American airstrikes were suspended. As a result, further large-scale operations have been put on hold. Can the United States do more? The answer, yes. But whether it will resume strikes depends on several factors. Long-term strategy in the Middle East, maintaining military superiority without reigniting a full-scale war. Political and international constraints, especially amid ongoing regional negotiations. And commitment to international law, ensuring humanitarian compliance and minimizing civilian casualties. That concludes today's video. If you have questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next analysis.